EV Revolution show is supported in part by Budget Safe Solar. If you are considering solar in most any part of North America, give my friends a call. They will take the time to listen to your specific situation and help you reach a decision about what's available to you and what makes the most sense. If you would like to join the growing solar industry, they'd like to speak with you. Go to www.budgetsafesolar.com to contact them. Well, hey, welcome to this edition of the EV Revolution Show. This is my fully charged live San Diego coverage episode. Uh, and I'm down here just about ready to let people in and start the show on the first day on Saturday morning. Welcome. Thanks for tuning in. So this will be a quick show. I'll do some interviews, uh, show you some B-roll, show you what's going around, just give you a sense since you can't make it down of what might be going on here at Fully Charged Live San Diego. So I'm super stoked for it. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show.
dreams with New York pretty. I wanna fly down in New York City. Run scheming light in New York's pit until your awakening is falling dreaded hard. Be sure to stay and stay at home. Just doing some walking around before the doors open and uh, the canoe vehicle is here, which is pretty interesting. All right, so here's the front of the vehicle, actually. It kind of gets confusing because the front and the back look very similar. You've got this big piece of glass here because it's a see-through into the front trunk area, which continues on into the front cabin, which I'm sure they'll probably put a barrier on in a production version. You have your headlights here and then here's your main A-pillar going up to the back, into this sculptured back. But it's, you know, it's, it's a really big piece of glass, obviously as uh, their vehicles are built for. Then as I come around here, looking a little bit uh, closer at it, um, it's interesting, you know, it's a minimalistic cockpit with a couple of small screens, uh, one small screen and then I think the phone. Interesting steering wheel design. Again, this is a pre-production version, my understanding. But just by what I'm seeing, it looks pretty good. It's a very interesting design. I mean, that is a big front and a big window to look at there, as you can see, if I could tilt the camera the right way. Um, so it's, it's interesting, um, but very roomy. And that's what these things are designed for. It's kind of multi-purpose vehicles. Um, you've got the, the dual sliding, uh, the door I think uh, pops out and slides, I believe, uh, or might swing open, I don't remember now. And then trying to get myself out of the reflection here to this glass, but uh, you can see the back seat is enormous. I mean, you can get a kid's soccer team in here basically and roll around with them if there's enough seat belts. You've got this wraparound lounge style seating here that's belted up which I guess is cool and things will fold down, of course, and you have a tremendous amount of cargo space on here. But you can see the looks of the vehicle as I uh, zoom out a little bit, that, uh, you know, it's got that curvature, right? The front and the back look very similar, big tires on this thing. And then we go around to the rear. Um, again, big, big hatch lift back, which isn't open today. Big rear wiper, the sloping rear. Of course, you've got your back seats here, a little bit of storage room at the back behind them, but not a whole lot. Um, again, there's a lot of storage on the inside. And as I walk around, again, those big tires, and we're back to looking at the rear seat. This side, I can tell you it has a new car smell to it, if that helps. <laughs> uh, it's an interesting proposition. You know, certainly as a commuter vehicle, as a, you know, a, a park and a ride kind of shuttle service or something, this would be fantastic if we're doing something like that or a carpool. Uh, again, you know, mom taking the kids to uh, games and stuff like that. Um, or dad, mom and dad would be fantastic. Then as I wrap around to the to the front again here, with these uh, enormous uh, uh, wipers that go in opposite directions, it's pretty. It's a pretty unique vehicle. Pretty interesting. Uh, first time that I've been able to see it live. So, uh, you know, look, keep your eye on Canoe and see what's going on with them. All right, so my last stop for today, I think it's going to be Nimbus here, the booth. I've been watching you guys. Hi, Liang. How Liang. are you? Good. Good to meet you. Uh, you are the CEO of the company, I'm is that CEO right? CEO and founder, He's yep. the top dog and the founder. This is a cool, interesting vehicle. A lot of buzz with you guys. You guys are in Michigan, I know, so I'm in Ontario, so we're mm -hmm. not that far, but kind of following you. Tell me a little bit about the company and the vehicle here. Sure, yeah. So uh, at Nimbus, we're building a uh, three-wheeled, compact electric vehicle that's about the same footprint as a motorbike okay. and it's um, meant for you know around town trips in the city where um, you know shorter distances yeah. so there's actually two seats okay um, oh that's right yep. yeah. yeah it's a two-seater yeah um, there there are kind of the you know just we, we give people just the sort of basics that they want in a car things right. like heating yeah. AC yeah. infotainment system um, yeah AC is optional but mm -hmm. okay and uh, you know, all all electric, of course, which is all electric here yeah, now. Of course. Uh, normal battery operating range is going to be how many miles? Ninety-three miles in the city. So ninety-three miles, so about just under a shy of one hundred and sixty kilometers. Let's say one hundred and fifty or so kilometers, yep. which is more than adequate for daily, you know, joint, you know, trips to the grocery store or whatever, you know, doctor's appointment and that kind of stuff. Yep. For that and. Um, uh, level one and level two support charging, or just uh, just one for now. Level one and level two. Okay. Um, the charge time is the same on both, so yep. five and a half hours. Yep. You can also um, swap out the batteries by hand. So oh, okay. There, there's there's battery packs underneath the driver's seat. Okay. So you can take them out by hand and, and yep. uh, ch charge them up that way. Oh, okay. So you can have something ready to go if you get home and need to go out again or whatever. Yeah. And for okay, a lot of people cool. living in cities, they don't have a place to charge their vehicle. Right. And that's kind right. of the you know a deterrent for a lot of people that wants to own an EV but yeah. can't in the city. Yeah. Uh, or they can't install you know a charging uh, a charger in in their house. Okay. Right. Yeah. 
And uh, so having the battery swap allows you to charge the vehicle Absolutely. a lot more easily. And from a, um, a drivability perspective, you guys have something unique where you have a yeah. gyroscopic method, correct? To, to kind of help with stability or how does that work? Yeah, yeah. So the vehicle tilts like yep. a motorcycle. Mm -hmm. And um, the reason we're doing that is we wanted to make as a compact of a vehicle as possible, basically something as big as a motorbike, right? Okay. Uh, and obviously being a lot safer, more practical, and, and easier to use. And so the tilting allows us to do that. Right. Uh, but a side effect of the tilting, besides just the practical aspect, is it's a lot of fun to use as well. So. <laughs> well, I've seen, I've seen some early videos that you guys just put out about mm -hmm. that, some of the first drives with that. And it's, it's a, it would be, take a little bit getting used to as a driver, right? Where you're, oh, okay. But so you might at first feel, hey, mm -hmm. what's going on? Because we're not used to that right. degree of tilt, right. right? Movement, but then you, you realize it's stable, it's still comfortable and still managing the road. Yeah, it actually yeah. feels more natural just because we're used to driving a car. Right. The, the motion of a car is actually very unnatural, and that's why if you're reading in a car, you get motion sickness. You guys are at what stage of development? Are you past a, an alpha into a beta, or whereabouts are you guys there? Yeah, so, so we're still in the in the prototyping phase. Okay, um, yeah. We're getting uh, close to production, okay. so we're targeting uh, about a year out of okay. production. So late Q20, uh, late Q4, 2024? Q3, Q3 of, Q3? of, of okay. uh, 23. Yep. So. Yep. You can rent it out okay. for uh, $200 a month. Oh, wow. Okay. Which includes insurance. Yep. And uh, you can cancel that at any time. Okay. And I guess the beauty of that is because it's now, is it a motorcycle? So you need a motorcycle class license then? Or how is that going to work from a DMV perspective? Yeah, so it, it sort of varies a little bit state by state. Okay. But most of the states in the US, you do not need a motorcycle license to drive one. Okay, cool. And MSRP? Uh, $9,980. Okay, wow, cool. So, Absolutely. Thank you very much. All right, All right thank you. It. Yeah. Now, the bell of the ball for this show seems to be the Aptera product. There was a huge line yesterday for people just to look at it and check it out, um, and I expect the same for today. This is their latest um, pre-production vehicle that they've rolled out, which I believe is called the Gamma, that Alpha, Beta, Gamma, and then the next step will be basically into a, a very much a 100% production vehicle type. This is about 80% uh, finished from what I understand from uh, speaking to uh, CEO Chris yesterday, which I'm going to get on camera a little bit later uh, on this day as well, if I could find the time. The problem is it gets busy, get talking, trying to schedule something in, but I'll try to work on it. Now, one thing they are going to be doing is uh, ramping up production here locally in the U.S. They're literally just a few minutes uh, north of San Diego here in Carlsbad, which is their headquarters. And as they build out their manufacturing facility there, they have a big, big building for that. Now, their delivery model is going to be the same that we see for no most niche vendors. They're going to start locally, you know, uh, send you know a few dozen units within this within the San Diego, L.A., you know, California, Southern California area, maybe up to the Bay Area. Get those customers going so that they have close interaction capabilities, just like Lucid and stuff, so they can follow the early customers. If there's any issues, if there's any software glitches, whatever, they can respond pretty quick and meet those uh, challenges and then iron out anything that might be happening within the production line before they get to mass scale in this case. I think it's a good good mantra, and I look forward to speaking to their CEO later on today if I could snag it, but I thought I'd, since it's quiet and before the, uh, the mass has come in here, had a chance to just quickly look at this and make my comments. So, again, Ben. All right, good morning. Day two here at Fully Charged Live. Um, man, it, was it a busy show yesterday? My voice is half gone from talking too much, which is a good thing. I love talking to people. A lot of people came by. So I thought I'd start off this uh, second day coverage with uh, a quick, because it's quiet in here before a lot of people come in, just a quick look at the Fisker Ocean. This is the first time that I'm seeing this vehicle. And it looks really nice. I like this matte paint job that they have here. Uh, just kind of really makes it stand out and pop a little bit more, but in a very non, you know, in your face kind of way. Now, this is a 2023 model. I think this is still a pre-production prototype uh, by the looks of it, but it, uh, the fit and finish looks pretty good from what I could see. Um, couldn't really get anybody on camera for this to talk to, but you know, there's lots of specs online. This is starting price of um, under $40,000 for a SUV, a uh, mid-size SUV that this is. Uh, production should be starting later this year or into early 2023 for first customer deliveries. Now, some of the specs, this is a 540 horsepower 
uh, version. Most of them are going to be all-wheel drive. There, there will be some uh, selections that will be a little bit less than that, but 0 to 60 in about four seconds, uh, up to 350 miles range. Um, so, you know, some really good specs, standard 17-inch infotainment, um, all that kind of stuff. So there, there's a couple different models here in the U.S., and then uh, they'll be shipping to Canada as well. I know that they have orders for all over the place, which is a good thing. Um, but, you know, 200, uh, I say starting at 275 horsepower and up to 550 ponies for that. Um, and it can tow just over 2,000 pounds as well. So for those that are looking to get something to tow a small camper vehicle, we, it will be able to do that. Uh, with, again, up to 350 miles, 380 miles with dual um, uh, motors, a uh, combination, excuse me. Uh, I'm just trying to read some of the specs here that I can get. Um, you know, kind of like Tesla, where a lot of the stuff is in the display. Uh, it's got a really big uh, touch screen, 17.1 inches, I mentioned. Um, safety features, standard suite of safety features, which we're seeing now from everybody that's coming out. With uh, a powertrain warranty that's a little bit different, that's 10 years, 100,000 miles or 160,000 kilometers. Which is a little different, most of them are warranting those powertrain and battery components for 8 years or 100,000 miles, 160,000 kilometers. So that's good, that's a little bit different as they roll out their, um, uh, their support network for getting things done. Uh, trying to find some Canadian pricing. The sport configurations for Canada will start at just under 44,000 and go up to uh, 90,000 for the extreme version by what I see here. So some versions will qualify. I think, I think the sport and the ultra should qualify for the federal incentive here uh, in Canada and uh, then check the local provinces to see if there's any further qualifications that you could stack. Cool looking vehicle. I'm glad that I got a chance to see it in person. Can't really play around with it because it's a static display and they don't want you climbing in and out. But, you know, hey, it's a nice vehicle and I wish Fisker the best of luck. So I also got a test drive with the Electromechanica folks. Um, I had a nice interview with one of their sales, uh, director of sales. Her name is Ruth. Unfortunately, that video got corrupted and um, I can only use some of the B-roll that I have here. So they are a company uh, based in actually in the West Coast. So these are Chinese built vehicles right now, but they will be coming in house uh, onshore into the US shortly, uh, later this year or early into next year. They're single occupancy, three wheel all electric vehicles, as you can see by these pictures. They don't require a regular license, a, a motorcycle uh, license will do, or an M style license. And basically it's to uh, get people around to do their chores and odds and ends and things like that. They have a range of 100, just under 100 miles, about 93 miles or about 150 or so kilometers. Um, and um, it's a pretty nice vehicle. In fact, I took one for a drive. You'll see just coming me coming back in a bit. And it was much more refined than I originally thought it was going to be. And now these guys have been around a while. They're currently selling and delivering in Southern California and Arizona. And those are the initial, initially the two markets that they're going after um, as they slowly round out the states. Uh, so interesting vehicle again. It's you know it's basically a motorcycle, but you're encapsulated in a cabin. You have the you know you have air conditioning, you have heating, you have a, a windshield with a wiper. So you have the conveniences of a full auto, but just in a personal vehicle type of situation and mode. Um, so it's a little interesting looking, <laughs> you know, you'll love it or hate it, uh, basically, but they've been up in development for quite some time and um, they seem to be doing well now. Uh, pricing starts at around $18,000 US, you can go to about $20,000 and there are some uh, incentives that you can get depending on what state you're in. So check those guys out at electromechanica.com for more information. And I want to again thank Ruth for the interview. Sorry, Ruth, I couldn't get you on camera here, uh, but you did a great job. All right, so I thought I'd stop by the Electrify America booth to meet my old friend, Rob. How are you, sir? Hey, good to see you again. Good to see you. Yeah, we were just saying it's been a long time since we've seen each other yep. in person. So I uh, just thought I'd get an update, see what's going on with you guys. You know, a lot of action going on here in the U.S. with the new infrastructure, you know, rollout from the Biden administration and then IRA and all this kind of stuff. So first, what's going on in the U.S. with you guys? How are things going? Up. The U.S. is going great. We're yeah. continuing our build out. We're at over 800 stations now. And 800? Wow. Yeah, and okay. uh, about 3,500 chargers uh, wow. across the country. Excellent. So we're, we're super excited. And, you know, we, we announced our boost plan last year. So we're headed to, uh, boy, 1,800 stations by 2026. And that awesome. means 10,000 chargers. And then in Canada, things yep. are, are really yes. um, going going big there as well. we got yep. 30 stations up and running. Yep. And we got a plan for 100. Yeah, I know. I know you guys have a coast-to-coast -coast plan yep. for that, right? Yep, You've so talked about it. The long-term plan is a little longer. Yep. How's that mapping out for you? 
it's going great. Yeah. So it's you know by, by t again by 2026 we should have 100 stations in the ground in Canada, wow. Trans nice. Canada built out as well as other, a lot of other routes nice. uh, throughout uh, the major yeah. metro. So we're we're really excited. Yeah. And from a U.S. rollout, uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Do you have a, a east to west now connection, or are you oh, almost built yeah. out? Yeah, we've had an east to west. That's what I thought, for, right? For many years now, and, okay. and it's multiple connections. Okay, which is great. And then actually, there, we we always had a big gap in the Montana, North Dakota, South Dakota, Wyoming right. area. Right. Right. Of the middle of the country, so we're building that out now. Right. So we'll have even more options and, and more ability for people to drive anywhere in the U.S. Excellent. Which is fantastic. And how how is the news for the new infrastructure plan from the administration impacting you guys? What, what's your take on it? Yeah, well, so we're really excited about it. I mean, one of the things that we did four years ago that everybody kind of called us crazy on is installing 150 kilowatt, 350 kilowatt charges, right? Mm -hmm. At that time, there were really no vehicles that That's could right. take that kind of charge. Right. And everybody said, well, no, what are you doing? You yeah. But you know, with the new uh, Biden administration and putting in the infrastructure plan, the Nevi yeah. plan, the, the minimum requirement is 150 kilowatts exactly. for stall for for continuous capability, yep. continuous charging capability. Yep. Uh, chargers have to look at each location, so you know they've taken a lot of the learnings that, that we've um, set forth on and, mm -hmm. and implemented that. And I think you know that's the right thing. That's what's really need, needed to drive EV adoption. Absolutely, it is. I mean, uh, and I think that's a sweet spot, you know, that we're starting to see now. You know, cap vehicles that are capable of up to 350, you know, that that's into the into the mid 200s. I mean, that's pretty quick. I mean, you know, yeah, HMC so. products, right? The 18 minute. Yeah. I mean, that that's a fast stop. Now we're starting to get closer to that gas station experience. It, it doesn't need to be five minutes. You know, right. we're we're getting there, right? Yeah, absolutely. We see the averages going up. Right? Yeah. You see Kia and Hyundai. Genesis coming out uh -huh. with great vehicles doing 100 or 200 kilowatts and above. Yep, yep. Uh, you see the Lucid Air hitting 350. You I see know. the Hummer EV hitting yeah. 350. You know, so there's a lot of great different makes and models of vehicles, and they're all pushing to higher charge rate capabilities because exactly. at the end of the day, that's what, every, that's what customers want, right? I don't yep. want to sit there for an hour. I want to sit there for 20 minutes or 10 minutes, yeah. right? And get on my way. Um, and how's the home charging? Uh, I know you guys came out with a home package, and uh, which has some linkage to the app, which can help you out. How is that rolling out for consumers? Yeah. Yeah, um, people really, really like the product, right? Yep. The fact that you can kind of control everything from one place and mm -hmm. get your control your home charging as well as get your public charging yep. uh, needs fulfilled in one app that makes it really convenient. And the other really neat feature we developed into that product is tying into the utility, okay. right? So you can identify where you live, what utility and tariff you're on, and then we can yep. help set the schedule. Oh. In, in the app itself, so you okay. can control the charging, so we can help optimize the, the cost, you know, what it takes to charge at home. So, oh, it's, okay. so you're getting the best, the best deal. Um, but that's that's the other aspect, and one of the big reasons why we built an ultra fast network is not everybody's going to have that luxury to charge right. overnight, right? right. Uh, or that dedicated place to charge. Mm -hmm. And so having that ultra fast charging out around the public makes sure that everyone can get into an EV. Because yep. now with EVs having 300 miles of range, 400 miles of range, and yep. fast charge um, capability. You don't have to have that dedicated place anymore, right? You can buy an EV yep. and once a week, go do your groceries, charge your car, get your range back, and you're set for the week, right? And Just like yeah. you would for your, with your gas power car. Exactly. And, and so we really yeah. need to make sure when we build infrastructure, we're, we're, we got to keep everybody in mind, right? right? So that everybody can live the EV lifestyle. Right. You know, so. I want to ask about um, serviceability and how that's rolling out. You know, I know you guys have upgraded. You're, you're constantly looking at the, the systems. I do hear some sometimes consumers saying, and, and it's not just you, Petro sure. Canada, EV. I mean, all the other guys have some challenges. How are you continuing to look at the serviceability of your environment to maintain a higher level of SLA for yeah. consumers? I, and we, we really took that on right from the beginning, yeah. right? Uh, when we built our center center of excellence lab where we had every charger uh, that we have deployed mm -hmm. plus we have a whole fleet of vehicles in that lab so we're continuously testing okay. getting data from the field what's working what's not and trying to get to root cause and then working with each of the charger manufacturers okay. to, to fix those things so yeah. that's a continuous process that happens day in day out with, mm -hmm. with dozens of engineers that are working tirelessly the QC to make is just continuing to absolutely yeah. Yeah. and so and then there's the other logistics right of all the supply chain yes, and the technicians that we've trained across the country, yeah, right, to be able yeah. to maintain these things, and and we always stand behind the, the, our our yep. product, right. So sometimes uh, one of our manufacturers can't keep up. We're we're not afraid to go in and go ahead and, and replace some things, right. So um, so yeah, we're 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 constantly monitoring the network. 
um, we're making the changes that we need, and then we're learning from that, right? And one of the things that we, we, we're displaying here at the show is our new next generation chargers. Mm, okay. And so that's really taking the last four years of learning and, and putting it into the product, right? Okay. So that's more reliable and more robust, right? Yeah. So we can we can give that confidence to the customers. And so Excellent. we're actually going out and replacing a lot of uh, I was older hardware. Ask you, so this is a refresh model, that's exactly. a multi-year approach? Yeah, so we've already announced we're going to do about 300 chargers here in the, on, on the United okay. States. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll, we'll take out some of the older equipment, yep. put our new Gen 4 equipment good, in good. Um, and drive that. And then as new sites build, obviously mm -hmm. we're going to use the new hardware the going forward. Excellent. And then as, you know, as other equipment ages over time and it needs to be replaced, we'll go ahead and replace that equipment or, or fix it, whatever it needs to be. Awesome. Canada's performance has been fairly fairly well. Yeah. We, we use one manufacturer primarily in Canada, yeah. so yeah. We, we've been able to stay a little bit more focused yeah. in that area. So yeah. we've been really pleased with, with how the network's performing there. Good. Um, and you know, we that's one of the areas where we really prototype the canopies. Yeah. So all our sites have canopies, right? I was going to ask you about uh, that. And yeah. we took a lot of great learnings from yeah. that, and now we're starting to bring that to the United States. So yes. a lot of our, our sites in the States now we're going back and putting same, similar types good, of canopies good. that we did in Canada. For you. Any last uh, last comments that I didn't ask you about that might be important for, for consumers to know? Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, you know, we're, we're excited to be in the space. We stand behind our, equip, our mm -hmm. equipment, we stand behind our service. Mm -hmm. uh, we're making the necessary changes and improvements as we go forward. So um, you're just going to see more stations, more reliability. And again, it's all about helping drive that confidence. Excellent. Well, looking yeah. forward to it. You know, glad to glad to, to see what you guys have done already and what you guys do and what you guys will continue to do because it's very important to continue to spur EV adoption to have that uh, reliable and robust infrastructure. Yeah, Always a pleasure, you. sir. Yeah, I'm glad we were much. able to get caught up. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. All right, so before the crowds come in, folks, I'm here at the Indy EV booth, which is literally across from mine, so it was nice and handy. I'm here with John Santos. How are you, John? Good. How are you? Excellent. Good to meet you. Thanks for giving me a couple minutes of your time before the hordes come in. Yeah. I know nothing about you guys, so this is pretty curious. You know, I looked, yeah. at, looked at you guys yesterday going, hmm, who's that? I got to talk to these guys. What are you all about? Please tell me. Of course. Well, just to give you some background, we were started in 2017. Yep. Um, we were kind of developing this car, the Indy One in secret, okay. because we wanted to create this product um, and then show it off to the, you know, the mass. Right. We announced this car to the media last October. Okay. And then we went to LA Auto Show where we kind of debuted our car to more people. Yeah, yeah. So, but a little bit about our car. This yep. is a five passenger crossover sedan. Mm -hmm. um, we do have two different trims, but this one is our premium trim. Okay. It, it goes up to 300 miles in range. Okay. It's a dual motor, all wheel drive, produces around 475 horsepower. Yep. Zero to 16 around four seconds, 4.2. Okay. Yeah. But what's wow. really interesting about our product and our amazing car is underneath that hood, you can see mm -hmm. that is our vehicle integrated computer. Okay. So what that mm -hmm. is, it's a fully functioning Windows desktop PC. Yeah, okay. And it's connected directly to that 15 inch display on the yeah, right side. Yeah, I see that display, yeah. And, and I'll, I'll have some B-roll running while we're talking too, so. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And with that, any applications, you know, Photoshop, Premiere Pro, Blender, mm -hmm. this computer is very powerful. It can handle okay. everything. Okay. So what we've been doing actually, we've been doing test rides at New York Auto Show where okay. people would sit in the back put on the VR headset, and it's so immersive. It's VR and augmented reality. Now, the, the vehicle itself, um, obviously this is still a, a, a alpha prototype, I would imagine, or maybe a beta. I don't know how far you guys are down the chain there. This is actually our pre-production pre prototype. Pre-production prototype, okay, so you're, you're, you're fairly well down the line. And starting MSRP? Starting MSRP, it's gonna be at 45. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then the premium price is gonna be at 69. That That's with all the bells yeah. and whistles, the VIC, the okay. 475 horsepower. Yeah. Um, uh, do you, uh, I haven't looked at your website, but do, have you publicized what the size of the battery pack is on these? Oh yeah, so in our, on our website, we do have do, two different trims. The okay. standard one comes with a 75 kilowatt hour 75, battery. 75, okay, yeah. And then the, this premium one's gonna be at 95 kilowatt hour. Okay, battery. pretty cool stuff. Yeah. I'll put some more information up on this, but wanna thank you, John. Thank you so much, It's been a pleasure Dan. learning about your vehicle, and again, I wish you guys the best of luck. It's yeah. awesome. Thank yeah. you so much, right, that was no great. Problem. All right, and another vendor that I wanted to see here at the show is Go Cycle, and here is Mr. Richie. How are you, sir? Hi, Ken. Good How to are meet you. you. Good. Good to meet Good. you too. We're, we're, I'm always a first name basis. You're know. right on. Doesn't really matter. I like it. Now, are you uh, the CEO of this company? I am, am not I promoting no. you now. I uh, I do business development BD? for North America. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. 
So, and it's uh, my seventh year with the wow. company, so I'm pretty familiar. So it's our 13th year as 13th a company. 13th year, it shows you how ignorant I am. I don't <laughs> follow the e-bike market that much, but you know, you guys reached out and I really wanted to, I was stoked to see you guys. Tell me about GoCycle, what are you guys all about? We're all about uh, making a better electric bike for yeah. the world. Okay. And fast forward to today, we're looking at the uh, GoCycle G4i Plus, top mm -hmm. of the line. Really nice. It's 13 years of refinement. It's wow. the most refined and versatile electric bike in the world. I happen to personally think with the carbon wheels and the carbon midframe and the gloss black, this is one of the most beautiful electric it bikes. And the, and the biggest probably asset about it is its livability. It's really easy. It's an easy bike to live with in terms of a, a tool for urban transportation. We're purpose-built. You don't see the battery. There are no exposed cables right. in this. Okay. It's super light, yep. but it's also, it's hard to articulate verbally, which is why we love these shows. You know, carbon fork, carbon yep. mid-frame, all kinds of little bits, adju height adjustable handlebars, yep. um, daytime running light, low, yep. low blinking, high, high blinking nice. from the integrated. automotive yep. technology. Can't, nobody can Auto steal it, it's all integrated. It's all integrated, yeah, right. Like Most e-bikes have a little screen yes. that somebody can knock off or steal. Mm -hmm. The patented clean drive serves two purposes. It keeps your clothes clean, mm -hmm. you know, it keeps your car thought? clean, yeah. you know, the yeah. GoCycle's designed to live with you, exactly, right? I, yeah. I take it into Starbucks, you know, and put it next to my table when I it's get a coffee easy, or bring yeah. it into my office and charge it. You Plug know, it so on, put it on a bus, go uh, transit with right. you, right? Yeah. Most yeah. e-bikes are 50 to 70 pounds. Okay. This is the third time I will have said this, I apologize, okay. but we're 36 to 38 pounds. Wow, okay. That's so it, half yeah. the weight nearly of almost any other e-bike and we ride like a dream. That so uh, range, kind of battery sizes? Yeah, capacity, the basics like are, uh, the range is up to 50 miles on a charge. Okay. Yeah. Um, the speed is a 20 mile an hour bike. It's a class two e-bike. Yeah. Okay. Rear it's, motor? The motor is a front motor. Yeah. It's a German made G4 drive, four okay. go cycle. Yep. It's twice the torque of our last series of go cycles. Okay. This is the, How many the watts fourth generation be? go cycle, 500, 500 watt, watt motor. Yeah. Okay. Again, San yeah. Francisco is one of our biggest markets yeah, and yeah. it'll get out, get you up the toughest San Francisco hill. Wow. The, so yeah, that's no, all that's you That's a need. lot of power, yeah, for that's sure. That's a lot of power. Yeah. And the back drive is all pedal power. Okay. It's human power. It's okay. You have a kind of a pure dry, riding, bicycle right. riding experience. So if you want to if you want to get healthier, you can dial the assist back okay. infinitely oh, to okay. suit exactly the so way you want the it's not just on or off. You can it's not throttle just on the assist. Off. Yeah, okay. you, it, there's, a, there's a riding curve in the GoCycle Connect app. Yeah. And you can show through via this torque sensor mm -hmm. how many watts of pressure on the pedals you put to engage the motor. And then at the top of the curve, how many watts of pressure on the pedal to get full 20 miles an hour. Wow. And you can move that curve. Um, where, do, where do they start uh, from an MSRP and go they from there? They start at uh, $39.99 for uh -huh. the G4, yep. and they go all the way to $69.99 wow, okay. for the G4i+. Plus. Okay. It's pretty cool looking. So Yeah, thanks. Well, listen, thank you very much for walking me through this, and I think I have time to maybe take one around the track. Oh, that'd just, be just fabulous. That We'd love to get You so. want me to show you how to fold it and yeah, take it into sure. Starbucks or your office with you? Uh, yeah, absolutely. All right. Yeah. One, two... It's that easy. Three. Wow. It's that easy. Look at that. That's it, eh? And then we're rolling it in. I like that. Thanks, with Ken. The, with the kickstand out. Yeah, <laughs> nice. Well, that's awesome. And you guys obviously stand behind your product from warranty and serviceability. Yeah, two-year warranty and, yeah. on everything, including the battery, and okay. a three-year warranty on the frame. Okay. And serviceability? Are, Service you have centers a across or? the country. Okay. Yeah. So U.S., Canada, Europe, you guys are all over the place? We're all over the place. This yeah. is our 13th season. Yeah, I was going to say, season. you know, shows you what I know. I don't know it all, folks. So, well, listen, yeah. thank you very much. Clean living. You got it. All right. <laughs> well, thank you very much. Thanks, Ken. All right. All right, so I'm here with our my booth buddies because we're right across from each other. We've been talking all weekend. I'm here with Matt of Chargeway. How are you, Matt? I'm good, Ken. Matt's the, the big kahuna here, the CEO. Tell me, what the heck is Chargeway? Because I've been seeing you guys show people this and I got to know what's going on here. Yeah, I mean, so what we wanted to do with Chargeway was really make charging easy to see. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> you know, visibility is a big part of the problem. Absolutely. Gas stations, they take a whole city block. Yeah. But with Chargeway, you got to know where you're going to find it. And you also, when you do arrive, need to know you can hook up 
and you need to know what power output you're getting. Okay. Because if you don't know that, it's going to directly impact your fill-up time. Absolutely. So, yeah. so we wanted to color code the stations based on plug type. Okay. So if you, for example, if you have a, a BMW iX, you use green stations. Okay. So we also wanted to simplify how we describe it. So you filtered it, make it easy to filter for the customer, and not have to worry about the connector type. Just what's your vehicle? Boom, we'll tell you. And right? so they can yeah. see it, right? So yeah. I mean, we've yeah. often, you know, again, early adopters of EVs, we used schematic drawings and plug yeah. drawings and things yeah. like that. And what we found was a lot of people that were not early adopters would say, this is a little bit too complicated. Right. And then we'd throw the names at them like J1772 or mm -hmm. Chatamo or CCS, and it just made it worse. But it makes us sound smart. But anyway, it does continue. make us sound smart. <laughs> uh, if you know it, it's great. Yeah, yeah. But what we wanted to bring people in kind of at a high level so they knew what they needed to know. Okay. And most, when we found out in our research, most people would say, well, I just need to know, can I connect there? Yeah. And if I do connect there, yeah. how long do I have to wait if I choose that station? Yeah. And so we said, all right, well then let's make it simple to see. So color for plug type, and then simple numbers for power levels. Yep. So you can know that your IX goes up to level six at green stations. And then all these numbers on the map, as an example, there's wow. a six, seven, two, four. Yep. You then know if you choose a higher number, you're going to fill up faster. faster. Okay, I like that, so yeah. make it easier. Uh, so this is a perception, this is a, just a blown up representation of the app that you guys have. Mm -hmm. um, so subscriber base, you, you become a member, you sign up, is that how that works? Yeah. And is there a fee involved for membership or how does this app work? Yeah, the app is free to download. Okay. And so for any driver, any vehicle, any EV, they can yep. download it for free, Android, yep. iOS. And once they've downloaded, they create an account, they can add as many EVs to their account as they want. Okay. So if you have a multi-vehicle family, you can yep. add your iX, your Tesla, your Rivian, your okay. Volkswagen. So yep. it's designed to be, work, be something that works for everybody for every EV. So. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Uh, so once they do that, they set it up, and then it, again, just plug in. So maybe walk me through, okay, I'm going to take a trip. What do I do on the app here? Yeah, so there's a few things. One of the things we built in as well was a charge time estimator. So this really helps oh, explain cool. what the numbers are on the map. Okay. So if you're going to be talking to someone about charging up at home, a level one, we know it's going to take you a long time. That's going to be multiple hours. Yeah. Level two upgrade, that's where you turn that into an overnight style charge. But then in chargeway, levels three through seven, those are the very op you know, varying options of fast charging. Yes. And so three, four, five, six, and you see that charge time keep going down. Yeah. You reach that max, that's how, that's how you can know what that experience is going to be. So once you know that information and where your stations are, you can then plan a road trip. Okay. And so we use the EPA rated range of every vehicle, but then we allow you to set your speed and the temperature oh, outside. Okay, so to capture those variables, because yeah. they do impact range, right? Yeah. Well, we, yeah, we want to be transparent with people yeah. about yeah. What, it, what is it you're actually going to get maybe in the summertime or in the wintertime. Right. And so what, once you know that, you can then choose, let's, for example, we're here in, we're here in San Diego. Mm -hmm. Let's take a trip to Las Vegas because it's a typical Southern California We feel trip. lucky, folks. We're off. <laughs> we're, We're coming back loaded with money. That's, yeah, well, that's right. the idea. It's like, are we leaving right now? <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Right. So with that, then it shows on a Google map, you can then choose a okay. different route. Let's just stick to the interstate. Yep. And so what it then does is it, it will look for all the stations along that route, and then based on your vehicle, temperature, and speed, it yep. will then select for you the stations it suggests you should stop at. Okay. And so, for yep. example, here it's saying you should have a 40-minute stop. It's going to be at Hesperia. Okay. There are, obviously, here you see the count, the amount of stations and or chargers. And who's the provider and things like that. Who's yeah, the provider, yeah. 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 So okay. about a 40-minute stop, and then so you can click on this nice. information to see what's at the location. So what amenities are nearby, oh, what, what wow. food is there. Nice. And so this is a really simple way, and again, obviously getting into Vegas, one more little stop here, maybe about 10 minutes to just top off when you get into town, yep. or you can fill up when you arrive. Yep. And the idea is to make it so it's much easier to plan things out, know how an electric car will work in your life. Yes. That's the idea. Exactly. All right. Well, awesome. All the best of luck. Thank you so and much. And is this North American coverage, or how's your coverage on this? Yeah, North America, U.S. and Canada. U.S. and Canada for now. Are you looking to expand that out? Having those conversations constantly, yeah. I tried, like... folks, pulling more sec top secret information, <laughs> but Matt's, you know, he's a stone wall. He just, you know, can't get anything out of it. We'll have so, more okay. announcements soon. So, I yeah. love that. So that's good news. All right. Thank you very much. Appreciate your time. Thank you. All right, so one of my last snags for this afternoon is an interview with Chris, CEO of Aptera. How are you, Chris? Good to meet you. You too. Good to meet you as well. Thanks for taking a couple of minutes. You, you have been running ragged this weekend. Uh, if folks that, that aren't here, these guys are the bell of the ball. There's lineups of people to see your vehicle, which I'm so stoked on. Tell me a little bit about where you guys are at now with Aptera and you know how's the next six months to a year look for you guys. It's really Yeah, exciting. for your fans who don't know yeah. who Aptera is, yeah. I mean, we're a company focused on efficiencies. First principles engineering when yep. it comes to transportation. You find out when you have a sedan or an SUV traveling at highway speeds, most of the energy you're using is actually going to pushing air out of the way. Yes. So <clears throat> the first thing you want to do if you want to make efficient transportation is make it aerodynamic. Second order loss is weight. So make your vehicle lightweight. And then an efficient powertrain. 
combustion vehicles are just horrible at this. Uh, your EV fans, yep. no. Um, and then if you make a very efficient vehicle with those three principles, you can do cool things like add solar charging. Yep. So we actually have a solar panel on top of our vehicle in four different segments that can get you over 40 miles a day of free solar charging that's huge. range. It's like almost 60 kilometers or so LA. So that's why it's we, huge. Uh, we introduced the vehicle uh, 18 months ago or yep. so. Uh, we've already taken over 32,000 orders for the nice. Aptera. Congrats. Uh, we've been progressing through our four stages uh, yep. to production, which is Alpha, Beta, Gamma, Delta. Yep. Uh, Alphas, <clears throat> we built several of and we showed them around the world, yep. uh, but they were uh, primitive, so to speak. <laughs> we evolved that design into a, a beta design, which we uh, you know, took and beat up at the yep. racetrack and did a lot of validation testing on it, and then took the knowledge from that and rolled that into Gamma, yep. uh, which you see at the show here. Yeah, which they debuted at the show here, yeah. And we feel that Gamma is an 80% production contented okay. vehicle. Yeah. So the next step for us is to get to 100% production contented vehicle and we hope to be there in just a couple months excellent have a uh, production design solidified by the end of the year and then ramp production in 2023 and supply chain seems to be holding up for you in order you know, uh, supply as as chain is a nightmare to... and uh you know i can't <laughs> course, fully yeah. express the <laughs> uh, angst and anguish that i've gone through i think we could all do but you for bar yeah. uh luckily um <clears throat> You know, next year, I yeah. think a lot of these things will be cleared up. Yes. So I think people are starting to see through the fog yeah. and we're starting to write supply agreements with strategic yeah. suppliers that are just amazing for us. No, that's great, that's great. Now, because yours is a three-wheel three, -year, a three -wheel vehicle, uh, I know you've got some you know, full suspension, it rides really nice, it's a different machine very comfortable. Um, from a, a safety standard perspective, do you still have to comply with NHTSA and IHS uh, you know, crash testing? And, and, and are you getting close to that phase? We're technically a motorcycle or right. an auto cycle. Okay, that's why I asked. Um, sure, so, yeah. you know, the kind of compliance crash testing uh -huh. is not something that they do on motorcycles. Right. Uh, but we want to show people that we're not just designing a safe vehicle, we're trying to design the safest vehicle on the road. Okay. Uh, we've tested our previous body structures and we actually had the highest roof crush strength of any passenger car on the road. Wow. Uh, we also did uh, even front Tesla. Even Tesla. Uh, that's what Tesla. they claim. <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, but, um, yeah. you know, now we have a whole new body architecture. Yeah. We have to retest that before we start production. So next year we'll start to go through those tests full frontal, offset frontal, side impact, roof crush strength. And we'll okay. share that with the public because wow. we want them to know, you know, our progress and how safe and strong our vehicle is. Wow, interesting. And of course, you've got reservations globally, not just here in North America, correct? In over yeah. 107 countries we have orders. Wow, awesome. Awesome. And, um, Obviously, some of the climates that aren't as nice as they are here in San Diego or Carlsbad, where you guys are. Um, you know, I live in Toronto and Ontario, so we, we get some snow, we get all that kind of stuff. Uh, how do you foresee your vehicle handling in those conditions? You know, you know we I have mean, a, normal driving winter conditions. Yeah, we have a lot of orders from the Netherlands yeah. and Sweden and Norway, yeah. and we plan to make a, a, a superior vehicle for yeah. Canada, nice. uh, something that handles great in ice and snow. A cool thing about our vehicle is we have an all-wheel drive package yeah. where the motors are actually in the wheels. Okay. It's basically a server motor in yeah. each wheel, and you can tell that servo position at any moment in time, so if you have wheel slip, you can dynamically it's, react instantly yeah, yeah. Um, so vehicle dynamics we think will be superior uh, wow. with uh, you know our torque vectoring system nice. uh, but we uh, we you know have yet to go through cold weather testing uh, we'll have to get to the point where we have a locked vehicle design and start validation next year right, right. but we uh, we hope that people really enjoy our all-wheel right. drive system and everything it can provide I think they will and your battery management is all thermally uh, you know liquid cooled and, and heated and all that stuff so you're all prepared for the for yeah, that yeah, kind we of heat, heat the battery pack too as so well. in yeah. cold situations we can heat it up for charging and when Excellent. you want to start the vehicle Excellent. in the morning. And lastly, uh, I'm going to ask you to, to tell viewers um, you know, how, how they can find you guys and that there is still some crowdfunding going. It's a great opportunity. Not that I push any anybody on funding, but if you're interested, you should seriously look at these guys and make an educated decision. How do they find all that out? Yeah, if you want to learn more about Aptera, it's aptera.us. Uh, if you want to learn about investing in Aptera, you just click on the invest button or go to invest.aptera.us. Uh, the cool thing about uh, you know modern um, you know investing is that 10 years ago you couldn't invest in early Google or yes. early Tesla, uh, but there was a thing passed called the Jobs Act uh, that allows individual people to invest a thousand dollars in great ideas like ours, and now you can get in on the ground floor with very exciting companies that you just couldn't get into before unless you were a billionaire or part of a fund. So yeah. uh, we have over 12,000 investors in Aptera, wow. okay. um, and we're growing our investment community. Yeah. As we speak, the show has been really great for people yeah. wanting to uh, invest in Aptera after they've actually seen our progress. So uh, please uh, please check out the website and, uh, and learn more about us. And you got Sandy Monroe, of course, we know the guru of this, you know, uh, looking at you guys and helping you guys out. I mean, that's gotta be a vote of confidence. Yeah, Sandy's helped us out since inception. 
to make a very manufacturable vehicle, and now he's helping us design our assembly lines and production equipment and yeah. tools, and he's uh, he's just been an amazing uh, asset to us. Right. Thank you so and much. I hope at some point to be able to come down and, and see one of these units when you get closer, and uh, do you expect to get some out to some of the press at so soon? So yeah, flights, uh, you, you know, know uh, March, you April next year, yeah. we hope to have a lock design and then start building production right. intent samples that we can share with people. Excellent. Well, we look forward to that. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. I know it's been a, you know, a stoked thing for you guys. Yeah, appreciate <laughs> it. All right. Yeah, that's good. All right. So my last interview today is with the man, the myth, the legend. Robert, how are you, thank sir? Thank you. Good. Well, thank Listen, you. thank you for inviting me down to this awesome show. You know, so good you came. I'm oh. so happy that you guys have come back to the U.S. with the, with the fully charged live shows. Um, what's your been? What's your biggest takeaway and impression so far for this weekend? You know, I mean, where it, we're is, at it is basically because what I see is is not the organizing of the show, the immense amount of work that the team have had to do to get it to this stage. Yes, it's just when I'm walking from A to B, it's meeting so many people, you know, who are really enthusiastic about. The, the energy transition, if you like, about exactly. electric vehicles and everything That's to it. do with it, and uh, you know, are kind of very passionate about it. So it goes beyond, you know, commercial decisions or everything. It's 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 a much bigger life change than yeah. that, and it's amazing. And I think there's, I've met a lot of people here of my generation, slightly above, who might have been drippy hippies in the 1960s <laughs> yeah. and 70s, a bit yep. like I was, but have kind of gone on and kind of gone, no, there is, we can do something to change the way we live. We can possibly live in a way that damages the, the planet we live on Absolutely. a little bit less. Yeah. All those things are, you know, and they're all step by step by step, but it's, it's so good that there's so many people with that, we're bearing that in mind. So those know. attitudes of that transition and change are becoming much more positive yeah. towards that. Yeah. And then yeah. I've, I mean, I've had a couple of young people on panels we've done today yeah. and yesterday who are just, you know, you just go, thank goodness. I know. That they get, that they. The next kind of, generation. Yeah, right? and they're kind of angrier <laughs> and more impatient than, than my generation, but absolutely rightly so, you know, they need to push that, that agenda. It's so difficult to, you know, I've said it a couple of times on the stage here, you know, we've all grown up in a fossil fuel culture, yes. if you yeah, like. It's absolutely, absolutely part of our we're, world. We're car guys. I mean, yeah, you know, we yeah. go back, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I mean, in every every aspect of our lives, the, yes. you know, all the plastics, all the yes. all transport, I mean, yeah. that's, that's how we've lived and heated True. or cooled our homes, everything. Yeah. And it's to move away from that. It's, it's a big job. It's not going to be done in a couple exactly. of years or a, or one show. Exactly. But one show is a tiny step in the right direction. It is. Hope. No, these shows I think are massively important. You know, yeah. uh, this is the fourth one that I've I've been with right. you guys. The first two I just kind of covered, and then of course it, it, 2020 is when we last spoke on camera in Austin, yeah. which was again a big, you know, dipping that toe in the ocean. Yeah. That is the American marketplace, and the response there again was, was phenomenal, yeah, right? Yeah. You know, again, and this is a, a country that's slow to change. Yeah. You know, that boat is a slow turn, but it's, but a, it's, big, been very it's a big boat. It's a big, <laughs> it's a big, big boat. <laughs> It's a big, big boat. Yeah. So. Now, obviously, the politics here are going to help the cause, though, yeah, right? You know, with yeah. the new administrations, um, infrastructure, and environment plans, and IRA, and all that stuff. Yeah. I mean, it should really help once once yeah. the dust settles. Yeah. Start pushing. So, what do you see are the challenges that we're going to see for the remainder of this year and into 2023 from a marketplace, from an EV marketplace? I, I would say it's going to be the range of vehicles available. Yeah. And I think that's yeah. the thing, and and what we're I think it's so it's such a common topic of discussion and a, and a plea is for in a way smaller lighter cheaper electric Absolutely. vehicles Absolutely. you know that there are that we've got a really good we're getting a really good choice of really big yeah i mean you're lucky in the uk and europe where you got much more selection we than do we do selection and you there. have some cost yeah. of you got mg it's a, a fantastic MG brilliant right yeah, vehicle yeah. really value prop here yeah. with gm's equinox announcement you know that yeah. i just talked about last week you know, thirty thousand dollar US. Now we're starting to get yes. there. Three hundred miles. You know, yeah. up to three hundred mile. This yeah. this kind of twenty percent uh, or twenty minute charging, yeah. and that's really going to help accelerate the and market. That, and that's the and I think the the, the, the challenge we're going to see. And well, I've felt this for some time. And this is from talking to people in the automotive industry. It's not right. some sort of esoteric thought. <laughs> it is that the the challenge really for the existing big car manufacturers in Europe and yeah. North America is is making that transition. They've built themselves around internal combustion. That's yes. the world they understand. Mm -hmm. And this is still a kind of step in the, into the dark for them. And while they're hesitating and not make, maybe making as many moves as they should, there's other people, come, we've seen, we can see right. it here emerging. Right. I mean, exactly. Tesla being the obvious one, but sure. the cars we've, we're seeing coming out of China that are now yes. already arriving in Europe, they yeah. are, they're a major challenge to, yeah. to existing car making. And really good cars, yeah. really cheap. And I think you got to ask this as much as I did, when are they coming to North America? And yeah. it's just a matter of time, I think, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think because, I mean, the one thing we all know, and we know in particular, the demand is there. Yes. You know, that and that, when, uh, uh, my 
crude understanding of capitalism is if the demand <laughs> is there, often a supply arrives. They, it shall follow. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It shall follow. Yeah. Well, listen, you know, thank you to you and the team for all the hard work and dedication that you guys do through the channel and through the live sessions. They're just phenomenal. You. you know, we got to keep pushing. We got to keep moving forward. Yeah. Uh, but I've seen, you know, just in those short couple of years, even with everything going on, a massive transition, a yeah. massive cultural shift. Yeah. And we just got to continue, not you know, nudging and pushing yeah. and kicking. It's even if they're screaming. One tailpipe right? at a time. I love it. Yeah, I love absolutely. it. Yeah. Thank you for the plug. Great. Thank you, sir. All the best. All right. And stay tuned. We're fully charged live coming next year. <laughs> Multiple locations around the world, including Canada for the first time. So That's I'm right. stoked yes. to be seeing I you there. I am very excited about that. Yeah, You're yeah. going to have some back bacon and maple syrup? Or, you might know? have yeah. to. You're going to have, have to make Beaver tails, you know those things? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you very much, sir. Right. Thank you. Yeah. Well, just here as things are slowing down in San Diego at the Fully Charged Live conference, so having a quick break, but uh, pretty well most of my filming is wrapped up now. I'm just going to go back and talk to some people and uh, answer some questions from some of the talks and things like that. So uh, always love coming to San Diego. It's a beautiful city. This is a lovely convention center, and I want to thank everybody who did come out to see me and chat. We had a great panel this morning with Robert and some other folks. Great conference. Hope you enjoyed this video. <clears throat> Thanks for watching. Excuse me if you haven't subscribed on YouTube, please do. That'd be great. It means a lot. You know, um, if you want to support me on Patreon, you can look at the link below and that'll get you that stuff. And uh, again, thanks for tuning into the EV Revolution Show. Really appreciate it. Keep watching the market and uh, I'll see you. I'm using my wrong hand, but I'll see you when I see you at the next time. Take care and bye-bye.